Welcome to a short discussion on significant figures. Today we're looking at numerical statements and problems which you may need to evaluate in terms of significant figures. Here we have a 10 gram peppermint sweet. The 10 grams means it was measured by an instrument. So that means there's error here. So meaning that this is not an exact number, but an inexact number. How many significant figures would we have? This is a trailing zero with no decimal point. So this zero is not significant. Only the one is significant. So here you'd say there is one significant figure. In the next example, we're talking about 10 cell phones. And cell phones are whole things that's counted. Like, for example, we have one pen here. If it's whole or counted with surety, we assume that it is an exact number, exactly 10 cell phones. That means we actually have an infinite amount of significant figures. It's known with complete certainty. Here we have a complex example. We have what we call leading zeros, which are never significant. Captive zeros between digits are always significant. The last type of zero is where we pause for a moment. These are trailing zeros. And because there is a decimal point in this problem, these trailing zeros become significant. So here we have six significant figures. The next question is asking you to give an answer in scientific notation to three significant figures. So let's quickly convert this into scientific notation. It would be 1, 2. So 1.2050 times 10 to the minus 2. How many significant figures did we have originally? This is the same figure from question 3. So we had six significant figures originally. And they're asking us to give our answer to three significant figures. So let's 1, 2, 3. That would be three significant figures. Do we round up or stay the same? In this case, we round up 1.21 times 10 to the minus 2 would be your final answer. Here we've got a problem with mixed operations. Here we've got addition. Here we've got multiplication. And here we've got division. Let's deal with the numerator first. We know that with addition, we use the decimal rule. So the answer should have the least decimals. But here it appears that this has the same amount of decimals as that. Not so in reality. You need to convert it into normal notation first. So this would be 330 plus 0 0.033. Okay. The denominator is going to stay the same. Now we're going to continue. So that's going to be 330. Three, Alright, so here's where we stand. And we punch it into the calculator and we get the answer of 66.0066. And now we need to give our answer to the correct number of significant figures. Here we said with the addition we need to focus on the least decimals. The first term having no decimals and the second term having three decimal places. So that means our answer should only really be valid to the first decimal place. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Now the overall operation is division and multiplication. That all hinges on significant figures. Let's look at the denominator. These are leading zeros, so they're never significant. So we have one significant figure for this term. Here we have trailing zeros and a decimal point. So the decimal point makes the trailing zeros significant. Here we have four significant figures. At the top, if this is the final decimal place to be recorded, so no decimal place is being recorded, the final one would only in fact have two significant figures. 
Now if we evaluate the problem, two significant figures, one significant figure, four significant figures, your answer should have only one significant figure. So with the six and the six next to it, do we round up or stay the same? We round up. Is it good enough to give your answer like that? No, it is not. The order of magnitude needs to be the same. So we add a zero as a place filler. This zero is not significant because there is no decimal point. Our answer therefore has one significant figure.